In this video, I'm going to unveil the seven deadly habits that are sapping your mental strength. These are habits, hidden in plain sight, that you may not even realize are holding you back. They are like termites, slowly, but steadily eating away at your ability to cope with life's challenges. From the grip of procrastination to the pitfalls of overthinking, the silent echo of negative self-talk to the emptiness of a life lacking purpose. We will also delve into the discomfort you avoid, the external validation you seek, and the emotional reactivity wreaking havoc on your tranquility. These are not just habits, they are roadblocks, standing between you and your potential for greatness. Let's dive into them together. Procrastination is often the first enemy to mental strength. It sneaks in quietly, convincing you that tomorrow is a better day to start. But is it? Procrastination is like a thief that steals not just your time, but also your peace of mind. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, believed that procrastination is the biggest waste of life. By delaying tasks, you are not just postponing your work, but your opportunities for growth. Seneca said, while we are postponing, life speeds by. Think about that for a moment. Every time you put off doing something important, you are letting precious moments slip through your fingers. This habit keeps you in a constant state of anxiety and stress, as unfinished tasks pile up, becoming more daunting with each passing day. Let's take a closer look at the life of Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic philosopher. Despite being an emperor with countless responsibilities, he managed to write Meditations, one of the most influential works of philosophy. How did he do it? Marcus Aurelius was known for his discipline. He tackled his tasks head on and never allowed the fear of failure to hold him back. He understood that procrastination is an enemy of productivity and mental clarity. So, how can you combat procrastination? One effective method is the two-minute rule. If a task will take less than two minutes to complete, do it immediately. This simple rule helps you break the cycle of putting things off and builds momentum for tackling larger tasks. Another approach is to break tasks into smaller and manageable pieces. This makes them less overwhelming and more achievable. By adopting these strategies, you not only become more productive, but also strengthen your mental resilience. Each small victory against procrastination builds your confidence and reduces stress, making you feel more in control of your life. If you find value in these insights, please like the video and share it with someone who might need a boost in their mental strength. Your support helps spread these life-changing ideas to more people. On building on the idea of procrastination, this brings us to the habit of overthinking. Overthinking is like a mental treadmill. Your mind is running, but you aren't getting anywhere. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, warned against letting our thoughts control us. He said men are disturbed not by things, but by the views they take of them. Overthinking turns simple problems into insurmountable obstacles draining your mental energy and paralyzing you with indecision. Think about the last time you were caught in a loop of overthinking. Maybe it was before a big presentation or an important decision. You weighed every possible outcome, imagined worst case scenarios and replayed past mistakes. This mental chatter keeps you stuck in a state of fear and uncertainty, making you mentally weak and unable to take decisive action. Consider the example of Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism. Zeno was shipwrecked and lost all his wealth. Instead of dwelling on his misfortune, he embraced his new reality. He focused on what he could control, his thoughts and actions, and went on to establish a new philosophical school. Zeno understood that overthinking the past or future is futile. It is the present moment that demands your attention and action. To overcome overthinking, start by practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness teaches you to stay present and fully engage with the current moment. 
Techniques like deep breathing and meditation help quiet the mind and bring clarity. Another effective strategy is to set a time limit for decision making. Give yourself a fixed amount of time to consider your options, then make a choice and move on. This reduces the mental burden and prevents you from spiraling into endless contemplation. By curbing the habit of overthinking, you free up mental space for creativity, focus, and effective problem solving. You become more resilient and capable of facing challenges head on. If these insights resonate with you, please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback is valuable and helps create content that truly makes a difference. I'm building on the idea of overthinking. This brings us to the destructive habit of negative self-talk. Negative self-talk is that inner critic that whispers, you're not good enough, you'll never succeed, or why even try? This constant barrage of self-doubt chips away at your confidence and mental fortitude, leaving you feeling incapable and unworthy. The Stoic philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, often struggled with self-doubt. Yet in his meditations he wrote, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. He knew that allowing negative self-talk to dominate your mind poisons your well-being and weakens your resolve. Negative self-talk isn't just demoralizing, it's self-fulfilling. When you constantly tell yourself you can't do something, you start to believe it and naturally you don't even try. Consider the life of Epictetus, born a slave. He faced immense hardships and brutal treatment. Despite his circumstances, he rose above his negative thoughts by focusing on what he could control, his reactions and mindset. Epictetus taught, it's not what happens to you but how you react to it that matters. By rejecting negative self-talk, he transformed his life and became one of the most respected philosophers of his time. To combat negative self-talk, start by becoming aware of your inner dialogue. Pay attention to the words you use when speaking to yourself. Whenever you catch yourself thinking negatively, counteract it with positive affirmations. Remind yourself of your strengths and past achievements. Another powerful technique is to ask yourself, would I say this to a friend? If the answer is no, then don't say it to yourself either. Challenge your inner critic by questioning its validity. Are those negative thoughts based on facts or just fears? Replace harmful thoughts with constructive ones. Over time, this practice will help rewire your brain to think more positively, boosting your mental strength and resilience. If you find yourself struggling with negative self-talk, you're not alone. Overcoming it is crucial for building a strong and healthy mind. Additionally, understanding the remaining deadly habits is essential to fully grasp how to fortify your mental strength. Missing out on them could leave you vulnerable to other pitfalls that erode your inner resilience. If these insights are helping, share your thoughts in the comments. Your feedback not only supports others but helps create better content for everyone. On building on the concept of negative self-talk, this brings us to the debilitating habit of lacking purpose. A lack of purpose can leave you feeling adrift, like a ship without a rudder, moving through life aimlessly and without direction. When you don't have a clear sense of purpose, every day feels the same, and it's easy to become disheartened and even depressed. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, to live is to be useful to others. Seneca believed that having a purpose was crucial for a fulfilling life. Without purpose, even the most trivial setbacks can feel like monumental failures. When you lack purpose, you find it hard to muster the motivation to get out of bed, let alone face life's challenges head on. Take the example of Emperor Marcus Aurelius who not only ruled Rome but also grappled with the burdens of his position. Despite the weight of his responsibilities, he wrote extensively about his duty to his people and his pursuit of virtue. His writings, later compiled into the book Meditations, show a man deeply committed to a purpose beyond himself. 
which helped him stay resilient amid adversity. One way to find your purpose is to identify what you're passionate about. What activities make you lose track of time? What issues make you want to take action? Another approach is to reflect on your values. What principles do you hold dear? Aligning your actions with your values can give you a sense of direction and fulfillment. Setting goals, both short-term and long-term, can also help you create a roadmap for your life, guiding your daily actions and decisions. If you ever feel lost or unsure about your purpose, remember that it's okay to seek help, whether through mentors, books, or even professional guidance. Finding your purpose may take time and introspection, but it's a journey worth taking. Understanding your purpose not only strengthens your mental resilience, but also makes life more meaningful. To continue this transformative journey, subscribe and share this video with those who might need it. It's essential to grasp the remaining deadly habits that can weaken your mental strength so you don't find yourself stuck in patterns that hold you back. On building on the importance of purpose, this brings us to avoiding discomfort. Many people shy away from discomfort, preferring to stay in their comfort zones where everything feels safe and predictable. However, this avoidance can significantly weaken mental resilience. By avoiding discomfort, people miss opportunities to grow and learn. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who started life as a slave, emphasized the importance of embracing discomfort to build character. He famously said, difficulties are things that show a person what they are. Rather than avoiding hardship, Epictetus believed in facing it head on, understanding the challenges or opportunities to strengthen the mind and spirit. Consider the example of Cato the Younger, a Roman statesman known for his stoic resolve. To prepare himself for the challenges of political life, Cato would deliberately expose himself to discomfort. He walked barefoot, wore simple clothing, and subjected himself to rigorous physical training. By willingly embracing hardship, Cato developed an unshakable mental fortitude that helped him withstand political turmoil and personal loss. To break free from the habit of avoiding discomfort, start by taking small steps. For instance, if you find public speaking uncomfortable, challenge yourself to speak up in small groups or meetings. Gradually increase the level of discomfort you expose yourself to. It's like building muscle. You start with lighter weights and gradually increase the load as you get stronger. Additionally, reframing your mindset can make a huge difference. Instead of viewing discomfort as something to fear, see it as a valuable teacher. Each uncomfortable situation is an opportunity to learn more about yourself and become more resilient. Research shows that people who regularly engage in activities that push their boundaries, such as cold showers or intense exercise, experience greater mental and emotional resilience. If you find value in challenging yourself and breaking free from comfort zones, like this video, and share it with those who might benefit from this message. It's crucial to understand that the road to mental strength is paved with moments that test and shape you. On building on the necessity of embracing discomfort, this brings us to external validation seeking. Many individuals constantly seek approval and validation from others, which can drain mental energy and weaken self-esteem. When you rely on others for validation, you give away your power and become dependent on external opinions. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, wrote extensively about the futility of seeking external validation. He believed that focusing on inner virtues and personal values was the key to true contentment. He noted, It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinions than our own. This profound observation highlights the irony of seeking validation from others while neglecting one's own self-worth. Think about the story of Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism. After losing his wealth in a shipwreck, Zeno could have sought sympathy and validation from others. 
Instead, he chose to focus on what he could control, his thoughts and actions. He spent his time learning from philosophers, and eventually developed the principles of Stoicism that emphasize inner strength over external approval. To break free from the habit of seeking external validation, start by practicing self-affirmation. Remind yourself of your strengths and accomplishments regularly. Journaling can be an effective tool for this. Writing about your achievements and what you're grateful for helps build internal validation. Another powerful strategy is to set personal goals that align with your values rather than what you think will gain approval from others. This shift in focus from external to internal can significantly boost your mental resilience. For example, instead of seeking compliments for your appearance, aim to feel healthy and strong for yourself. Research shows that people who focus on internal validation experience higher levels of happiness and life satisfaction. They are less likely to be swayed by others' opinions and more likely to stand firm in their decisions. If you find value in focusing on internal validation, share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey to mental strength is deeply personal, and understanding these habits can make all the difference. Building on the importance of seeking internal validation, let's delve into the last but equally critical habit, emotional reactivity. Emotional reactivity involves letting your emotions dictate your reactions and decisions, often leading to impulsive actions and regret. Epictetus, a renowned Stoic philosopher, emphasized the importance of controlling one's emotions. He famously said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This wisdom teaches that while you can't always control external events, you can control your response to them. For instance, if someone insults you, reacting with anger only escalates the situation and harms your peace of mind. Instead, taking a moment to breathe and reflect can help you respond more thoughtfully. Consider the life of Seneca, another Stoic philosopher. Despite facing exile and numerous personal challenges, Seneca maintained his composure and used his experiences to write extensively on the power of emotional control. He believed that by mastering your emotions, you could find tranquility even in the most turbulent times. So how can you cultivate emotional resilience? One effective method is to practice mindfulness by being aware of your emotional triggers and observing them without judgment, you can create a pause between stimulus and response. This pause allows you to choose a more measured rational reaction rather than an impulsive one. Additionally, cognitive reframing can be a valuable tool. Instead of viewing challenges as threats, see them as opportunities for growth and learning. This shift in perspective can reduce the intensity of your emotional reactions and help you approach situations with a calmer mindset. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more such content. Your support helps in creating more valuable content for you. And don't forget to check out more videos from our channel, shown on the screen. Thank you for watching.